I'm Rob LeCourier, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Ahmed Hafez, Cedric Nan Smith, and Joan Sobel, editors on the spectacular Moon Knight. Um, all three of you bring such a you know such wonderfully diverse backgrounds and range to one of the most ambitious television productions that we've ever seen. And you you each took on two episodes. They're all so different and they all bring their own challenges. So firstly, I just want to talk through the process of not only collaborating with the team at large, but also achieving a level of consistency across the show when you're each having to work in your own silos. And, and I, I, I assume you're also doing a lot of this remotely. Um, so Joan, how about you first? What was that like um, collaborating with Cedric and Ahmed to make sure that you're all building this show together consistently? Well, it's an interesting question because we actually didn't work physically anywhere near each other. Um, I was the only one who worked completely from home throughout the entire uh, series. So Sed and Ahmed were in um, Budapest and then they were on the lot at Disney, or, although Sed kind of went back and forth a little bit. So, I mean, we all read the scripts. I think we all tried to keep up with the scripts. The scripts kept, I, I have to apologize right now. I have gardeners outside. Oh, it's always the way. Awful, terrible oh. noise. <laughs> I, I, you probably can hear it and it's terrible. But um, anyway, we, I think we all tried to just keep up with the scripts, which was great at first, but then they really kept changing and they changed a lot throughout. Um, we didn't, I mean, we did talk somewhat, but it wasn't as if we kind of got together and, and formulated some great plan as to how each yeah. one of us would approach it. It's, it's kind of amazing though, that I think we all had the same feeling about the show and about the characters and what... I think uh, Muhammad was very clear, especially as to where he wanted to take this series. And he conveyed that to all three of us. Um, and then we were sort of on our own. And yet, when you look at the whole series together, they re it really flows and plays together. But, um, and, and please tell me, Said and, and Ahmed, if I'm going down the wrong path here, but I, I, we didn't really collaborate yeah in that way. Yeah, what, about, well, what do you think, Sid? I mean, if there was no collaboration, it, it came across so seamlessly. Yeah, I mean, I still feel as if we did check in with one another at, from time to time to make sure that we we're both he all heading in the right direction. Um, but it's true, even when Amin and I were in Budapest, we wouldn't see each other for days on end sometimes. We'd be like two passing ships in the night at times, you know, um, because we'd be in our rooms all day. Um, so uh, it wasn't as if we were speaking with each other day by day, but I, I do feel as if we did check in with one another and we shared scenes with one another uh, from time to time. And, and there was that bit of communication and collaboration in that way. And um, Ahmed, what do you think? Like, um, obviously, if you're not collaborating, there is still a sense that there's a consistent look and feel to the show. So was that challenging, given that there were two other editors that were also editing the series along with you? Yeah, I think I will, I will take from what, what John said. I think it's also, I'll defer it to Mohammed and, and Vincent and Moorhead, because I think from the beginning, the style, I think we have to follow since the script and uh, the, the way they direct the show. I think we follow. We followed it. I think I will. I will. I have to say also that because I I, I started a bit later because I, I started my episode in episode three. So I I, I take some time. So I I had the chance to to watch what Cedric is doing and what John's doing. So I I just got 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 the feeling and the idea of how how they how how they, they, we are gonna start with it because on the, also I, for, for me it was the first time to work with Abbott. So I, I think some support from John and especially Cedric because Cedric was in the, in, the, in the other room so sometimes I was I was asking him for some help at the beginning so that's that's how we started but I think I will defer it to, to the directors from from the beginning Mohammed and Vincent and Moorhead they start the style from the beginning so we followed what what uh, what they start 
Joan, you did um, two and five. They're yep. very different episodes. Some in the suit features an outrageously complex sequence in which Harrow unleashes these jackals, which we can't see sometimes. There's a lot of action, a lot of stunts. So the question I always ask editors on a, on a very action kind of stunt heavy episode is what are the specific challenges as editor to ensure that I, I guess you, you hopefully you have enough coverage, but then you are you're trying to ramp up the tension on something that's already at 11. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, a couple of things. I think we had some really great previs on these sequences, okay. on the action sequences, um, and and they were truly spectacular. The, the previs and the post vis I thought were, were marvelous. Um, the work that went into them was great. But as far as, you know, in that particular sequence, what was, difficult in it were, well, there were two things. Number one, it was the whole concept of the fact that nobody could see the jackal except for Stephen, um, which uh, was something that uh, was a concept that was uh, came from Benson and Moorhead. And it was hard to do that and make it work. Um, but the other thing that's hard is balance. I mean, action is I hate to say this, but action's really fairly easy to cut because really? it really is fairly easy to cut. <laughs> it's getting the right rhythm to it. Yeah. And, um, you know, for me, I always feel like you really need to know where you are. I think sometimes you get action sequences and it's a lot of stuff going on, but you don't know where you are. And that was very important to me that we saw that, that, you know, we were with Stephen, what was he seeing, where, where was he located, what was going on. But the other thing that in that particular sequence is the humor, because there's a lot of humor yeah. in there. And then it shifts when he becomes Moon Knight. There's a real sudden shift in that where it becomes very serious. Um, so it's really building up those rhythmic move, uh, moments and building and building and building it and making sure you have it right uh, and you can feel it if it's not working and if the humor is not coming through if if you know if i don't laugh it's you know i'm the audience i'm like the first audience and i'm kind of an idiot if, if you ever watch me um cut any scene together i mean I'm like laughing or I'm crying or I'm, you know, like as I'm putting it together. I mean, nobody should be in the room with me because I must look like I'm wow. or whatever. But I am the first audience. And if I don't have I, I, I think all of us, yeah. yeah. That's fascinating. You know, I have spoken to hundreds of editors and that's the first time that that's really been communicated to me because and that's of course you are you are the you all three of you were the first audiences for these yes. episodes and so you have to be feeling laughing crying getting angry getting upset intimidated whatever so yeah I want to we'll touch on that in a sec I, I wanted to ask Cedric because you're tasked with editing the pilot which sets the bar and it, and it also sets the scene for the whole series and then of course you did the most bonkers VFX heavy finale that I think I've ever seen. So I just want to go straight to the finale. When you're working with a lot of VFX and um, po in stuff that's done in post-production, just, just explain to us lay people how that works for the editor in the editing room. Well, as John mentioned before, a lot of it was done with previs and yeah. post-vis. And um, the sequences actually started uh, bigger than what you actually see, you know, on Disney Plus. And uh, there were also sequences that didn't have any previs and we had to sort of figure it out in the room. And in addition to the scenes that did have previs, there were others that didn't. And so there were times when we were literally in the room with Mohammed and Sean Faden, our visual effects supervisor, where we would be with an iPad drawing out stills and importing the stills into the, into the Avid and working with the stills and then slowly animating those stills. And um, so it was a lot of collaboration, um, you know, between Mohammed and the visual effects department and myself. Um, and just, you know, the, the three of us, and sometimes the DP, Greg Middleton, we would be in the room sort of like acting out the sequences um, before they would actually go shoot them. So 
there was a lot of that going on. And um, particularly in post-production, as we started to get shots in, it was a matter of just refining and cutting them down. And so um, there were many sequences that kind of were taken out entirely or uh, just trimmed down quite a bit. Uh, there were moments when uh, Victoria and Kevin towards the end were just pulling out or rearranging shots in a way that just seemed like very sort of bold, but that but they ended up working, you know, because we were accustomed to seeing things for weeks on end a certain way. And then at the very last minute, there were some changes. Um, one in particular is when Harrow and, and Moon Knight are charging towards each other and they uh, collide. Uh, there was a couple of beats in there that were removed and it goes straight from that moment when they're traveling towards each other to that iconic moon shot. Oh, so good. That wasn't like that for forever. There was a couple of other shots in between that like were very cool and actiony. And uh, I almost didn't understand the note when it was asked of me because I was like, wait, we're taking out all these other <laughs> great shots. <laughs> you know, when I put them together, I was like, oh yeah, it totally makes sense. So there was a lot of that, a lot of um interesting finds along the way and yeah you, you all three of you have to obviously demonstrate a, a real agility to make, making sure that you can keep up with all the changes because thank god for previews that's i don't know how you would have done this job without it but i my understanding from speaking to so many other people behind the camera behind the scenes is that there were a lot of shifts in the narrative as things were congealing and you've got to just keep up and um i mean the same goes for you like Episode three, we catapult, catapult ourselves into modern day Cairo. It's such a great episode. There's a lot of fighting and action in that. But for me, four is the highlight. I love the work in the tomb. That is so, there's so much tension in that. Firstly, with those zombie priests. And then, of course, the reveal of um, Alexander the Great. <clears throat> I'm just wondering, how much did the edit, um, I mean, play a part in how effective those scenes turned out? And you're on mute. I think since we started, I think in the early stage, so we was lucky so to start like cutting to be uh, with the camera, like we like, are editing day by day. So I think it, save, it saves us a lot of time at the beginning. And for me, I was in a situation like I'm editing it to, uh, to, two episodes back to back. So for me, it wasn't like the, the best scenario. So it took me some like, uh, with, well, I, I actually, I have to I, I have to mention also Tristan and Margaret, uh, our our, our post production coordinators, because they they they, they managed the, the situation from the beginning. So for me, it was it was it was a bit pressure at the beginning, uh, but I I I think it takes me like to to have that just to build the episode together. It takes me like I think after the defense shoot like two weeks after because I think we was we was editing the director's cut and the editor's cut at the same time. So I think it, took, it takes me like a two, for, for, for episode four, like a two weeks after, after, after they finished to shoot it. Uh, I think two weeks we have the episode. Then we start working on it with the director for one, for the director for one more week. Then we start working with the, with the process with Disney and with, with Marvel. Uh, so it takes like the whole, the whole, the whole six, last six months working on it. But to have the first cut, it takes like a two weeks. For episode four, especially no, no episode four. I love episode four. I love episode three and four, but episode four is is like very dear to me. Yeah, that is. I mean, I love. I could tell you every episode what I loved about it, but with four, I just re, that's when it <clears throat> it became like this show is different. Like it just, it, I had I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. It was just a really special episode, um, Joan. But episode five is where we there's a complete change of pace because then we're in the asylum. It's very, it, it, I just felt like that was the one episode that was quite different to the others. And of course you have all the flashbacks um, where there's a lot of emotional cues that have to be properly accounted for in the editing room. Now you've talked about feeling something as the first audience, which I think is a really novel idea that I've not, not really heard before. You're BAFTA nominated for your work on Eternal Animals. So you know how to, to get the audience to feel something viscerally. So what was your takeaway from working on a feature like that? And then of course, transposing those skills onto something that was very, very emotional. Well, I think there's a real connection uh, 
with both of them, actually. I mean, I tend to, I've done comedies, I've done lots of comedies too, but I also tend to do some pretty dark uh, movies. And, uh, you know, it was funny, I, I, I read a quote, it was, it was um, actually from an actress, Mary Louise Parker, about uh, this play that she's in right now. And I saw this quote yesterday and it really spoke to me and she said, we all have darkness. We all have things we need to be forgiven for. And I think that is something kind of important to remember. And I felt like episode five was all about that. It was all about his search for forgiveness, for forgiving himself. Yeah. Um, and it's a very deep episode. It was the one I think everybody was the most nervous about. Uh, it was different for Marvel. It was completely off the Marvel map. And I give them enormous amount of credit because they gave us a lot of freedom. They gave Muhammad a lot of freedom. They gave me a lot of freedom. Um, they made a very safe atmosphere to really delve into that creatively. And it was an incredibly creative episode to cut in the in the cutting room. And it kept changing. There was a lot of things. I mean, we were rewriting it. We were, we were re-editing it. We were wow. doing lots of things to it. It was very amorphous um, <clears throat> and, and different than the script really started out to be. Yeah, it's... It's really an amazing episode. It's one of the highlights, absolutely. Um, Cedric, some of your work before Moon Knight was on The Boys, and it reminded me particularly with the pilot because um, there's some really great sequences, particularly towards the end in the museum with, you know, that, you know, when um, Stephen's running through the museum. Um, but I just wondered, it's another propulsive, caffeinated action sci-fi series. So what do you most appreciate and value about editing on a series, on series like this, where you really get to go big and, um, and give us some really noticeable editing, but also... Um, you know, hide in the background while we're just so en enraptured in the in the action and the intensity of the story. I'm just thinking about that for a moment because I, yeah, I, I brought a lot of my experience from the boys to Moon Knight. And sometimes I felt like as if I was really taking all the air out of scenes and really zipping them up when I probably could have, and this is only in, just thinking about it and looking at the series as a whole. I noticed that that Jones see Jones episodes kind of breathe a little bit more and there's something to that which I, you know, I'm gonna work on another one for Marvel and I'm gonna bring that, I'm gonna keep that in mind because I tend to really zip things up. Yeah. Because of this, you know, history of action that I've been cutting. And uh, so I just, when I think about it, you know, there's a balance that you have to find, you know, where you can, you know, have, you can really pace things up and, and, and zip along, or you just like let the scenes breathe. And so that was one of the advantages of working with Joan and Ahmed was just seeing the different styles, you know? Um, but I, I, with episode five, um, I, I really took something from just observing how that, that episode evolved. Um, yeah. it, it wasn't what you see, you know, on Disney plus it, some of the scenes moved into episode six. Um, and so, uh, yeah, episode five was definitely uh, a high point for the show and, um, observing how the pace, you know, how the pace moved in that, in that episode was, was, um, something that I will take in the, you know, to future projects. Yeah, understandably. Um, I mean, my final question is um, about how you bring such a wealth of experience on projects within the film industries in Egypt and the Middle East. Um, and this is your third collaboration, I think, with Mohammed Diab and um, following, I think, Clash and Amira. Uh, there might have been others, but I think that's what I'm aware of. So exactly. that begs, it's, it's so wonderful that um, Marvel and Disney brought on so many local um, filmmakers to give this show some authenticity, which really, really comes across. So what do you most value about working with Muhammad as a director? Because I just think that 
those two episodes in the middle, they've got this really special rhythm that I really, really enjoyed. And I think a lot of that comes because of you and Mohammed. Yeah, this, this, this is, just, as you said, this was my third uh, project with Mohammed. Uh, by the way, episode four is directed by Benson and Moorhead, episode three directed by Mohammed. So at the beginning, when, when I knew that I would get, gonna work just one episode with Mohammed, it makes me a bit like, what like this is this is pressure for me because it was Muhammad like a safe zone for me because I went because of the language because everything because for me at the yeah. beginning I was just thinking about a lot of a lot of things so when when they told me that I'm gonna work one episode with Muhammad and the other was Benson and Morehead so at the beginning it makes me like oh what 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 should I do how how can I deal with them because I have I have some language issues I I know they are very good they are great directors so it makes me like in a position like what what should I do how how I can I deal with it. So and thank and for me by the way I, I I consider myself lucky to work with them by the way they are really great directors they they helped me a lot uh, working with working with two different directors and I think John at the same in the same chair uh, it makes me like uh, take from the episode to the other I, I I mean I mean I mean working with Muhammad it it, it affects episode four it affects episode right. four a lot and working with Ben it affects episode three a lot. Because episode three and episode four, I, I have to deal with them as a one unit because this is this is the beginning of Cairo and the, the beginning of the journey in, in Cairo. So I'm 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 concerned I'm considering these two episodes as a one episode. So uh, if you ask me about what I gained from Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad is, is 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 a very fast paced director, and in this in this in this project, I think he he used a different style the long the the the, the long shots. The, the long takes and with the fast pace also. And I think what, that is what also affect episode four. It, that's why you feel, you felt the sixth episode, it's almost one piece. Wow, yeah. So this is the right, the right answer for what, for what you asked. Absolutely. Um, I wish we had more time. There's so much to talk about, but we have to let you go. Joan, Cedric and Ahmed, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on some really extraordinary work on Midnight. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you. Thank you very much.